So if you try to recall what we were discussing on Aristotle, we were going through his logic in short and we also tried to uh, understand what form is and we are ready to go on, go forward about that. So in the past few classes, in the past few lectures, we were trying to understand what ancient Greek philosophy is. We are also seeing many of the Greek philosophers and uh, if I ask you who is the greatest of all these philosophers? What would be your answer? The greatest of all these philosophers we have seen. What is your answer? If you ask me the same question, I would say it is Aristotle. Aristotle I consider Aristotle to be the greatest of all these philosophers. It is not that others are not great. You know, Plato is there, his own master. Socrates, the master of Plato. And there are many others like Thales. Anaximander, Anaxagoras, Empedocles, Protagoras, Pythagoras, uh, there are many of them. All of them are great by their own right. Still, if you ask me who is the greatest of all these ancient Greek philosophers, I would say Aristotle. I would say that because if you look at the works of Aristotle, if you look at the books written by him, you will understand that uh, his area of interest, his area of exploration was so wide, it was so vast and diverse very different subjects he was dealing with. So uh, to understand Aristotle, he is, a, he is a very good taxonomer. You know what is taxonomy? Taxonomy is uh, it is not preservation, it is about categorizing and organizing things. You evaluate certain things, you categorize, you organize and you name them. So uh, uh, and, and it is assigning names. You categorize and assign names, define things and assign names. So that is taxonomy. And he was a good taxonomer. You, you look at Aristotle, so uh, you see that uh, most of the subjects that you learn today in the modern universities and schools, all of them were categorized and named by him. Biology, zoology, uh, meteorology, so, so most many of them. So he has written on all these subjects. So he has written on logic, he has written on metaphysics. He has written on natural philosophy and it includes uh, on the heavens, physics, uh, meteorology, psychology, botany, uh, zoology. So all these things he has written, ethics, politics, poetics. So, so wide is his area of interest. So wide is his area of interest and uh, his area of knowledge is so wide and diverse. So that is the reason why I consider him to be the greatest of all philosophers. And one of his unique contribution is logic. Like we saw in the last class, in the last um, uh, presentation we saw that logic is a unique contribution of his. He, he began a system, developed it fully and there is nothing more to say about that system of logic that he developed. So it has been undisputed throughout the centuries and there are two exceptions which comes with Francis Bacon and also the modern um, mathematical logicians. Some, some additions were made by them, with especially about inductive logic because Aristotelian logic is always deductive logic. So this was something that we discussed in the last class. Uh, there is something that appears in Aristotle both in his logic and metaphysics. If you try to learn, when we learn Aristotle, there is something that appears both in his logic and also in his metaphysics. It's a transition from logic to metaphysics. So we will be looking at that. So there is something called analogy of being. Okay, analogy of being. So I, I, why I am showing this is we need to know what is being because metaphysics is the science of being. You learn what is being. You understand being as being. So what is being? So when we say being, uh, means very often we say um, anything uh, can be said to be means to be so uh, to be means to have a being when something of when of something we say uh, something to be that means uh, that denotes existence um, so, so anything that has existence has a being so being is that which exists 
so to be means to exist very often we say if you if you know the language very often we say i am anthony this when we say our name i am damida i am ahalya i am madhav we say our name like that even if you don't say your name there i am that is sufficient i am i exist that means i exist if you if you know the uh, cartesian um, cartesian dictum like uh, i think therefore i am i think therefore i exist so anything that exist is considered to be being there are many ways in which uh, something may be said to be so uh, suppose there is a pen so there are many ways it can be said to be okay um, in the sense um, everything that exists as a being an individual has a being a property has a being the actual has a being the potential has a being so uh, in what real sense do we ascribe being to all these so if you of anything you can say it has a being a table has a being a chair has a being a man has a being a woman has a being so in what sense we say being with all these so aristotle illustrates this with a with an example of health he illustrates this with an example of health so uh, it, we look at some person when we meet somebody uh, or when we speak of somebody we say ah, his face looks very healthy his face looks very healthy okay we say his face looks very healthy in the sense that it is an indication of the health of that person so when his face looks very healthy it indicates that that person is very healthy it is an indication of his health but at some other time we say the food is very healthy the food that you eat is very healthy what does it mean that means that food is conducive to the health of a person means it is not bad it is, it is not um, if you eat it nothing will happen to you you will remain healthy so that food will help you to remain healthy if it if, if it is something rotten it will not be healthy if you cook some food and it is rotten means or you cook something with some rotten vegetable means that food is not healthy you understand so the meaning of the word healthy in both these sentences sentences both these sentences means the face of a man looks very healthy the food looks very healthy i want your response please so in both the cases do they mean the same or do they mean something different can you open your camera okay shavro so you look very healthy today your face looks very healthy uh, what do you think and suppose you had your lunch now and you ate a healthy food so i use the same term in both the sentences i use the same term in both the sentences does it mean the same do they mean the same do they mean the same or do they mean different so uh, what do you think do they mean the same i i use the same word healthy in two sentences in one i say nafi your face look very healthy your face looks very healthy and in another sentence i say the food that we ate today was very healthy the the meaning of the term healthy do they mean the same in both the sentences or are they slightly different are they different Huh? I think in some ways it's the same. In some ways it's the same. Yeah, this is what Aristotle says. Okay, they are neither exactly the same, they nor they are totally different. They are neither the same, they are not not they are totally different. Okay, so there is a basic notion of health which you see in both the usages, but in the particular sentence, it has a different sense also. so it is not totally the same it is not totally different either okay so he says uh, in all these instances the notion of health is used neither exactly the same sense that means univocally univocally means with the same meaning nor in totally different sense equivocally it is neither univocal nor equivocal this neither univocal nor equivocal in all these instances 
the notion of health is used neither univocally nor equivocally but they are used in an analogous sense they are used in an analogous sense that is why he says analogy of being okay analogy of being because they are used in an analogous sense that is in the sense if that is that means in the sense neither entirely similar nor entirely dissimilar so the term health can be predicated of several things that the term health can be predicated of several things but all these predications are rooted in one primary meaning namely bodily and mental well being it is common it is this common primary meaning that create the analogy of the notion of health okay